गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स होप यू ऑल आर फाइन टूडे विल बी डूइंग द रिविजन ऑफ चैप्टर नंबर फाइव कोल एंड पेट्रोलियम विच इज पार्ट ऑफ यूर पी वन एग्जाम सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट इज डिस्कस अबाउट वॉट आर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस एंड देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट कोल एंड पेट्रोलियम children as you know the resources are classified into two major groups natural resources and man made resources so we will be discussing about natural resources the resources which we obtain from nature are called natural resources for example air water sunlight etc these natural resources are broadly classified into two groups inexhaustible natural resources and exhaustible natural resources as you know inexhaustible natural resources are the resources which are not likely to be exhausted by various human activities or they are limitless second thing exhaustible natural resources are the resources which are likely to be exhausted in near future and they are Uh, available in a limited quantity that means the nat in natural resources which are not likely to be exhausted by human activity are called inexhaustible and the one which are likely to be exhausted are called as exhaustible resources another major difference between inexhaustible and exhaustible is inexhaustible resources are unlimited in quantity whereas exhaustible resources are limited in quantity so let us discuss about the exhaustible natural resource that is the first one is coal coal is the hard black color substance and it majorly contain carbon hydrogen nitrogen sulfur and moisture and it is formed by the process of carbonization so what is the definition of carbonization the slow conversion of wood into coal by a biochemical process extending over millions of years under the high temperature and pressure of the earth is known as carbonization children when the trees get buried under the earth crust they undergoes a process of carbonization and in this process of carbonization the color of the trees or wood changes slowly from uh, grayish brown to dark black color and that way the youngest coal is known as peat that means it contains only 50 to 60% carbon and rest all other uh, things are present in it including moisture moisture level is also high in case of peat as the the coal matures you will find that the carbon content increases like in lignite it is 60% and in bituminous it is 70 to 80% carbon and in anthracite it is 90% to 95% carbon is available and in case of anthracite the moisture level is also very less and that is why it is considered as the um, matured coal so peat is considered as the youngest coal and anthracite is considered as the oldest as you know when we will burn this coal we will obtain only two things one is heat the other one other thing is pollutant that may be the ash and the carbon dioxide gas but if we process it in a different method then we can obtain n number of products from it i have said coal contains many useful products and these are volatile compounds which are very useful for industrial purpose as well as for household purpose if we want all these things to be recovered we have to go for the method that is destructive distillation so let us understand what is destructive distillation when coal is heated strongly in the absence of air it does not burn but produces many by products 
this process of heating coal in the absence of air is called as destructive distillation of coal and the main byproducts which we obtain by this method are coke gas carbon coal tar ammonia liquor and coal gas the products which are obtained by destructive distillation of coal are coke and coal gas gas carbon coal tar and ammonia liquor they are very useful like coke is used as a industrial fuel it is considered as the purest form of carbon it is used as a reducing agent in extracting the metal coal gas is used as industrial and domestic fuel gas carbon is used for making the electrodes ammonia liquor is used for making the nitrogenous fertilizers and coal tar coal tar itself contains many uh, compounds in it which we separate by fractional distillation and they, these products are used in different industries like textile industry and then uh, paints and all other purposes medicines and all uh, can be obtained from the by products of this coal tar the next exhaustible natural resource is petroleum which we widely use in our day to day life petroleum the word is derived from two words that is petra means rock oleum means oil it is a fossil fuel which is dark in color viscous and has foul smell and this is also called as crude oil it is obtained from the earth crust it is trapped between the impervious rock and this is drilled out and then it is refined for different purposes how this petroleum is formed this petroleum is formed by the anaerobic decomposition of extremely small sea animals and plants which got buried under the sea bed millions of years ago and the conditions are same like coal high temperature and high pressure is required for this conversion this petroleum consists of complex mixture of li solid liquid and gaseous hydrocarbons salt water and earthly particles petroleum consists of many useful compounds in it in order to separate them we need to refine petroleum for refining of petroleum fractional distillation process is used in this process we heat the crude oil at 400 degrees celsius and with the help of a fractionating column we separate the different components of petroleum such as gasoline kerosene diesel fuel oil etc etc depending upon the difference in their boiling point products which we obtain by fractional distillation are mentioned like this residual oil fuel oil diesel oil kerosene oil petroleum gas petrol and from the residual oil we obtain asphalt paraffin wax and lubricating oil residual oil is the last uh, product which we obtain because its boiling point is very high the lubricating oil which is obtained from residual oil is used for or lubricating the machines then paraffin wax is used in many ointments and in making the candles also and asphalt is used for metalling the roads fuel oil is used for industrial furnaces and kerosene oil is used for lanterns or wick stoves or uh, pressure stoves and if this kerosene oil is refined then it is used as an aviation fuel also children diesel oil is used as a fuel for running the heavy vehicles and it is also used uh, in generators for generating the electricity whereas petrol is used for light vehicles and it is also used as a dry cleaning agent for the clothes and the very well known example is petroleum gas which we use 
as a household fuel in the form of LPG that is liquefied petroleum gas. We obtain this liquefied petroleum gas by compressing the uh, petroleum gas under high pressure and low temperature. Now we have seen so many products which we obtain from petroleum. The useful products which we obtain from petroleum are termed as petrochemicals. These petrochemicals are used in the manufacture of detergents, artificial fibers, plastic, etc. Children, we have seen two exhaustible natural resources till now that is coal and petroleum. The third one is natural gas. It is also formed by the decomposition of microscopic plants, animals uh, got buried under the sand and mud under high pressure and high temperature due to anaerobic bacteria. Sometimes it is formed along with the petroleum or without the petroleum and is trapped between the impervious rock in the rock cap region. This natural gas mainly contains methane that is 95% methane and 5% a mixture of ethane, propane and ethylene. These are all the carbon compounds. These are present in natural gas. Where do we use this natural gas? It is mostly used as a domestic fuel then in automobiles and in industries. It is a source of carbon and hydrogen which we obtain by the decomposition of this natural gas. The process is known as pyrolysis. The hydrogen and carbon obtained from the natural gas by the process of pyrolysis uh, is used for different purposes like hydrogen can be used in the manufacture of fertilizers basically the nitrogenous fertilizers and carbon is used as a filler in rubber tire industry that is in making the rubber tire all these exhaustible natural resources are limited in quantity and they need several years for the formation millions of years are required for their formation so it's our prime responsibility to conserve them. Second reason for minimizing the usage of these fossil fuels is they increase the air pollution. And third reason is they cause global warming. Due to all these reasons, we need to minimize the usage of fossil fuels. For this, the Petroleum Conservation Research association that is PCRA has given few tips to common man if we follow these tips we can save or minimize the usage of this fossil fuels children I hope you have understood the chapter very well if you have any doubt in this chapter you can ask me in our next online class. All the best for your exams. Thank you.